Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing a video that I posted just recently. It was only a few days ago that I put up a video called This Client Saved 2K on a UC and C System for a $50 Consultation. Well, last night I received a comment from a vendor of this system. And the guy is right here, J.R. Griffith, and I'm going to go over this comment because it is worth addressing this in a video. Um, first, I want to say that J.R. Griffith left me a very respectful comment. Um, I Again, there's no animosity here. I'm not trying to sway anybody uh, from any issue regarding that vendor. I do want to point out some issues, though, however, that must be addressed, not only with the comment, but once again with what he said in the comment as tar towards the engineering of the system. He wrote here, Vince, I've followed you for a few years now and can appreciate what you're explaining. However, this is a very early version of this control box and is intended for a hobby machine and hence is not the quality you designed for a commercial machine. Well, let's address that. I totally agree with you. I think you're absolutely right in what you're saying. The issue I have, and I think that many potential end users will have, is you have to define what you mean by a hobby machine. And let me be specific. In my genre, and I've done this once again, now I'm going online uh, in excess of over a decade, what we're seeing more of, and I see this every day as a vendor, you may see this as well, uh, Mr. Griffith, but what I see is that many people who are getting involved in the genre feel that a machine, regardless of the controller you have or the controller I have, they assume that they are in the same category. And what that means is, is in layman's terms, if a Haas machine can cut a substrate and be accurate, let's say, to a thousandth of an inch, and this is just arbitrary. We know that's most likely not going to be the case. Of course, it'll probably be much more accurate than that. However, let's just use an arbitrary measurement. If that machine is accurate and stable to cut repetitively, once again, a Haas machine, just stating obvious, is, is able to cut with an accuracy and a repeatability and stability at one thousandth of an inch, are we saying that a hobby machine, because the word hobby is being used in terms of the controller build, is not able to achieve the same stability, the same accuracy, and the same repeatability. Now, that's the real question, and this is the dilemma that many end users don't understand. They don't understand when you say that, well, this is a hobby-based controller, so they should assume to be known that it's a hobby-based controller, so stability and accuracy may or may not be there. But if we say that we're using the term hobby in the sense that we cannot cut parts out accurately, well, we both know that's false. And why I know that's false is my systems, I can definitely tell you, will achieve easily less than a thousandth of an inch accuracy if they're being calibrated on the proper system, meaning the proper robotics chassis, and using the proper precision measuring instrument. I have videos of it. I don't know if you do. I'm sure maybe you do. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But what I'm stating is a fact. The term hobby in this industry is being thrown around everywhere. Yet if we go on YouTube, for example, you will find a plethora of videos produced by many hobbyists who are starting to transition from hobby into realizing, hey, there's money to be made, and henceforth, that's why we're getting a spike in the automation industry, because anybody in business obviously would want to automate making money. It's just logical. So what ends up happening is we throw around this word hobby, yet, like I was stating, if we go on a YouTube video, we just do an open search, you're going to find guys cutting out artwork that is impeccable. And they're reselling that artwork, expecting that that AKA hobby machine is now producing commercial level results. Why? Because we are dictating once again that the accuracy of the machine, regardless of its size, regardless of its make, is still going to follow the same measurement principles. And all I'm stating is, is that yes, if a Haas machine is accurate to a thousandth of an inch, and your hobby or commercial or uh, we'll say non-proprietary robot is able to achieve the same accuracy, guess what? 
you basically have the same production standard minus the fact of the rigidity level and other variables that would be in the mechanical aspects of the machine. Now, I think all of anyone listening to this would agree with what I'm saying because we've defined it already once again on YouTube. So once again, when you say hobby, we need to make sure, and I feel us as vendors should be honest, in that, hey, this is a hobby machine, if what you're stating by using the word hobby in the context that you're trying to make your clients aware that this machine may or may not be as stable to produce repeatability, then I personally don't feel you or I would have any business. And I'm being honest. Why? Because people don't want to buy the potential of a paperweight. They want to buy knowing that this robot is capable of doing smaller projects with the same accuracy of the larger full-scale equipment and able to reproduce incomes based on the smaller projects. And this is fact. Okay, I'm an engineer, and again, you may be an engineer, you may not just be a vendor, I don't know your background, but I can just simply state that I know I've dealt with enough clients in both every genre that... Once again, Boeing is using one of my G540 systems. I'll put an actual excerpt uh, up that you guys can see. That shows that they're using a G540 system and they weren't looking at using it in a hobby use for, let's say, that it's not going to be repeatable and it's not going to be accurate. They are expecting it to follow the same principles of a full-scale machine at a smaller scale. So, again, we have to be very, very critical in what we're describing in terms of what is hobby and what is commercial. Because I hate to say it, there is no difference if both controllers, both robots are built to the same standard. Unfortunately, we don't see that. And that's something that hopefully in time... We will see. As far as continuing on with what you wrote, these systems are not designed for commercial application as a seller of this particular system. This is not a 2K system and someone was fishing for a payday. Well, let me explain exactly why they were asking for 2K. They were selling this controller with the CNC chassis. Whether or not it's worth 2000 under most principles, it would be. Um, as far as you saying here, that once again these systems are not designed for commercial applications. Um, again, we're getting into these really arbitrary type context use of words because commercial can mean commercial for what field? Because I got dentists using micro manufacturing to make teeth that make thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Now, is the machine as big as a hot? No, it's not. Is it as capable as a Haas as far as being accurate for the application it's designed for? Yes, it is. So we have to differentiate that. When you say commercial application, I think you need to be specific in terms of, again, accuracy, repeatability, and stability, and most of all, safety. And when I say safety, I covered some issues with this video describing some issues that is a little questionable as far as safety. So... As we continue on, the second AC outlet you wrote here, the second AC outlet on the back of the unit is for the user to plug their router in and have it to start automatically when a file was run. The design has now been changed to allow for a 1.5 kilowatt water-cooled spindle that is automatically started via the multi-pin connector on the front. I've sold these machines for 10 years and have never had any of these controllers fail. Okay. Um, I'm glad to hear that. I certainly am. Um, I, once again, you've been very respectful, and I certainly don't wish you or your business or anything any harm from that. But I am going to enlighten you on some things. As far as what is being done here, and I've got the picture actually brought up again. As far as your auxiliary power port, and this is strictly engineering, we can see we have the neutral coming in, to this 24 volt power supply, which can be analyzed right here, we see 24 volt. We have the live coming in to the relay, which is then getting switched on 
um, using the live power source that's also feeding this power supply. We also have the ground then coming in, once again, being split improperly on this terminal right here underground. Okay, what is actually occurring here and how this is actually going to work with a wood router, which is what I'm assuming you're talking about. Let's, let's just say uh, overall I believe that's exactly what you're talking about. A wood router from DeWalt, let's say, on a 1.75 horse arbitrary, you can look this up. Anybody watching this video can look this up. On average, those routers that are, are uh, tip, a typical wood router you'd find at a big box store, they will pull anywhere from 11 to 15 amps. Okay. If you plug that wood router into this port, you now are not drawing, or I should say you now do not have available just the 3 amps that this power supply now is requiring, you're also going to be drawing the amps that is required for that router. And a lot of guys are going, well, what does that mean? You know, what is, what is that? Who cares? My breaker can withstand it. That's true. Your breaker can, but here's the thing. You're going to have what's known as amp fluctuation due to the fact that you're going to have different friction levels put upon that spindle when it's machining. And when those different friction levels are incurred and those amp spikes happen, you're going to have an influence over that power supply. You're going to have an arbitrary amp fluctuation that goes up and down very consistently throughout the machining process. We don't know how much. We don't know how little. Again, a wood router, I've said this in previous videos, from a big box store is not designed for robotics use. So its amp fluctuation is like a regular power tool. The problem is when you have it connected to precision electronics like this that are running on a 5-volt signal typically for step and direction which controls and automates the motors that are directing your robot, you have the potential from that amp fluctuation to cause spikes. And when those power spikes happen, you can create instability. This is not best practice. The other issue is, is that you also have a wood router being used which is not using the proper double shielded cable which should be used around robotics. And the issue with that is you are going to have EMI issues or the potential thereof and then a guy buys this system who is incompetent of what I've just spoken about and then he buys it, takes it home, thinks he did the right thing, plugs it in, it looks like it's assembled right, it turns on, everything is moving at that particular moment and he goes to cut a file that takes three hours and all of a sudden he has random issues with it. And then all of a sudden he's going on Google and then he finds me. And then all of a sudden he decides that he's going to contact me. And when I discuss what he's got, because he sends me pictures like I've analyzed right here, then it all comes to fruition where, wow, this guy is either the best BS artist there is or he knows something because of the background of his channel and the fact that he is completely open about what he's discussing. So these are things that need to be addressed. And whether this is a Rev 1 box, which I totally understand, you're a business, you're small, you're starting out, you, you're going to make revision changes, I totally get that. But when we're talking about a revision change, that, that this is going to affect this, the possible stability of the system. And again, you said you've sold these systems for 10 years. I don't know. I will never know the truth of if you've ever had any problems with anybody having stability or one failing. I don't know that. I'll take your word for it. You have no reason uh, to lie to me uh, other than the fact of what we've already addressed. But I will say, as an engineer, that is not best practice, sir. And this is something that I hope in the following revisions that you've discussed has been revised, along with connectors that are not properly all insulated regardless of if it's a ground or not, because these particular uh, connectors here are following a ground lead. It comes in here, and then it patches over here. It is not following the best practice principle of, once again, using a terminal splitter. And I know what you're saying. It's not a commercial system. But I still feel that many of your end users would feel, as I do, that if you're producing a, a component for sale, then regardless of you saying, well, you know what? hey guys, this is not a commercial system, so don't expect it to be built to the standard that it's going to provide the most stability and most accuracy that you can get. I don't know if we would have clients. And I'm stating a fact. Come right in. We'll finish this up. 
Again, I have seen your control boxes sell for way more than the entire system for which these units are designed for, and the majority of customers wouldn't understand the major points you just made. Now, sir, I have to say, in all due respect, that makes absolutely no sense. And that why it makes no sense is that's exactly why I'm doing this video, is to educate those who don't understand and who could potentially be taken advantage of because if they don't understand and they buy in good faith, they're hoping that the vendor manufacturer is doing what they should to provide a product that not only is going to provide their potential growth in the genre that they've chosen in robotics, but also the crossover factor. Because again, I think this term hobby is being thrown around a lot when we're not describing what you are, at least in the context I believe you're stating. That hobby generally means in your terms that the system may or may not be stable or may or may not be accurate. Because a commercial machine, I guess we're implying is, of course. I don't feel that you would have clients if they knew that. I don't feel that somebody would buy a machine from China if China came out and just said, you know what, guys, this system may be stable. And guess what? It may not be for certain projects. No one would buy it. No one wants to buy a paperweight or a potential thereof to be a paperweight. So again, you're absolutely right. Most of the people that are watching this video, I hope, are the ones that need education on the major points I just made. Because what I'm bringing up, they can research themselves as well as yourself and see if I'm accurate. But I can tell you right now that, again, after doing this online, just online, for over a decade, dealing with clients from all sorts and all walks of life, that without a doubt, we as vendors... We as engineers have to be held accountable to what we're releasing and what, what our clients are expecting of us. And you're absolutely right in what you said that my controllers are not the cheapest controllers and by far may very well be uh, the cost of two of your systems, three of your systems. I don't know. But I can say this. They're built properly. They're built for stability, accuracy, and they're also built for safety, number one. So when we look at something like this and what you're bringing up here, we have to allocate that. And it's a very good point you made because price does dictate a lot. In certain instances, you certainly do get what you pay for. And many of us know that in this genre. Many of us. Any business owner will tell you that. When you start cutting your corners on certain tools, and now we're not talking a regular tool. We're talking a tool with major variables. When you go buy a drill... That drill plugs in the wall, you expect the drill to turn on when you pull the trigger. When you buy a CNC robot, you expect that the software is stable it's using. You expect the geometry software that you're using to create your files is stable and compatible. You expect that the controller you're using is stable, is going to provide the proper applicational speed for what you're doing, is going to have support surrounding all of that in terms of questions and whatever answers are required if you encounter a problem as an end user. And then on top of that, you have to understand the mechanical aspects of the robot you've implemented. So when you factor all that in, you can see the education that must be in place. And around that education, once again, and I've stated this before, is the fact that you have to allocate a price to that. If you are okay solving a small problem, then you're going to make a small sum of money. If you're solving a larger problem, then it's justified that you will pay a larger sum of money. No different than if you go to a dentist versus going to a cardiologist surgeon. So I think that that point is pretty much put into place. I think you see where I'm going with that. You then finish up by saying, this is not to start an argument with you, but the manufacturer of the unit would be the one liable in case of a fire as long as the unit had not been modified by the end user. Um, again, I certainly don't want to have an argument. I think we can have a discussion. But I think without any regard to discussing who built it, who sold it, whatever it may be. I myself as a vendor, sir, and a manufacturer, 
would not want to have any liability or feel any guilt associated with someone potentially getting hurt or losing property due to the fact that I built something inferior because of the fact of my incompetence. And that's something that everybody has to live with at one point or another. And I do feel that there is a point of ethic that we have to look at when we're talking about releasing something for resale where the general public may not be aware of certain instances where engineering may be done incompetently and potentially in danger of you know, potential of people getting hurt. It's frightening to think of that on top of the property potential damage that is in case. So if we want to split hairs here and say, well, the manufacturer will be the hell, hell liable, not you, because you're selling this, and now you're aware uh, of this system having fallacies. I mean, I, I think we, we both agree that this system was not perfect. And when I say not perfect, I'm not just talking about the stability factor. Again, I'll never know. You're saying you've had ten, 10 years of systems being sold and you never had a problem. But I can justifiably say that anybody in any type of electronics dealing with any type of solder type connectors that are not properly insulated this is basic principles of electronics this should have been ironed out okay it's not like a car manufacturer where they'll do a recall and send everything back unfortunately what we do see and again as a vendor myself we see a lot of these vendors sell things that they may or may not know, in which case if they don't know, it's incompetence, in which case if they do know, again, it's almost denial that these units should not be sold without actually going over and making sure that everything is done properly. I mean, I, it just is what it is. It's a point of responsibility as far as I'm concerned. And it has nothing to do with it being a hobby machine or a commercial machine. Unfortunately, what we see in this industry, and I don't know if you agree or disagree with this, is the fact that corners are cut so profits will be the highest. And uh, again, not everywhere. I just think that there are times where corners are cut because in this industry, it's much easier to say, hey, it's hooked up. We've got motion. Let's mail it out and hope for the best. If we get a return, hey, we'll deal with the return then and then we'll correct it. And that's fact. That's what usually happens. Um, again, my systems, like I said, the only defense I have is I will not sell a cheap system because, number one, my time is too valuable. My support is too valuable. So, again, looking at this and covering this in the most respectful form, once again, uh, I certainly don't want to argue. I think I've made my points, and I think that many people will see definitively, if they do their own research, where there's issues with this system, and it far exceeds that of just being coyed a, a hobby machine. So we leave it up to the end user to make their choice. But I do ask you this. If you truly do feel that this machine is hobby-based, and therefore it being a hobby-based machine, it's separate from a commercial machine in the attributes that I've already discussed stating uh, accuracy, stability, safety, then I think you owe it to your clients slash customers, if that's what you feel they are, to tell them that openly. And if they still choose to purchase it, then by all means, you've done everything you can do to be honest in securing that purchase. But overall, I don't know if that will be the case because truth be told, in all honesty, and I won't pull any punches, I don't think we would have sales on something like this. So again, guys, I hope that this video has been helpful. Um, I hope that I've been as respectful as possible because I certainly mean no disrespect, but this is a video that I feel needed to be done because of the fact that we are seeing more vendors pop up, and they should. I mean, the technology is growing massively. Um, it's something that's going to continue to grow, and it's up to us to differentiate what is real and what could be changed and what things we can you know, do better. I think we all can always do better in certain aspects, but I do feel that when we're releasing equipment to be sold, whether it be for hobby, commercial, whatever it may be, 
in dealing with electronics, we should be held accountable for what we are selling. And that does not mean that we get to hide behind coy terms as hobby, commercial, it's irrelevant. If it's a unit that's expected to complete a task and do it accurately and repeatedly, then it should be built according to such and built according to safety standards. This is what I feel. So hopefully, um, again, the video has been helpful. If you guys do have questions, require quotes, or consultations, please message me directly at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me um, at my eBay store. You'll see links in the beginning of the video and at the end. And once again, Mr. Griffith, I do thank you for your comment. Um, it takes a brave guy to do that and come out publicly and, and say what you've said. Once again, I do not wish you any harm, and I, I meant everything I said in all due respect. Because, again, it's an industry that is not the easiest to be, and I think we can both agree to that. So thank you all for your support. Take care.